Thank you for being here, and I want to say that I'm so pleased to be joined by so many of my colleagues here uh, to discuss the um, reintroduction of our Make It in America agenda in this Congress. Uh, three years ago, House Democrats uh, introduced our Make It in America plan to create jobs and revive our manufacturing sector, and we have been pushing hard for its consideration. Leader Pelosi is giving a speech right now where she would be joining us, uh, but uh, she and I have been uh, very, very strongly advocating, along with our entire caucus, the creation of jobs, which we believe is our number one uh, job in America, <laughs> the number one objective that Americans want us to be pursuing. While we'll be able to work with Republicans to pass a handful of Make It in America bills last Congress, including the Export and Import Bank, uh, reauthorization of the American Competes Act, a critical bill, and patent reform, there's far more to be done. In this political climate, we recognize that serious proposals creating jobs have to have a real chance of gaining bipartisan support in the House and the Senate and be signed by the President. With that in mind, we're here today to discuss our new Make It in America priorities for 2013 which not only stand the greatest chance of drawing support from both sides of the aisle, but also reflect what manufacturers, labor leaders, and entrepreneurs believe are the most important steps Congress can take to reinvigorate our manufacturing sector and create jobs for our middle class. This Congress will be focusing on four core components. First, we need to develop a national manufacturing strategy to guide us over the short and long terms. Secondly, Congress needs to continue making it easier for manufacturers to export. In 2010, President Obama set a goal of doubling exports by 2015, and we're almost halfway there. But in order to achieve this goal, we must do more to open new markets and improve our transportation infrastructure. Third, we need to encourage manufacturers to bring jobs and innovation home. This means enacting a targeted uh, tax incentives to help those businesses that want to move production back to the United States, encouraging investment in research and development, and supporting the production of innovative technologies. Finally, we must maintain a highly skilled, well-educated workforce. Not only do we need to invest in quality education and job training, but we also need to make sure that we are attracting and securing the top talent to live and work here in America. These are four critical areas where we believe Republicans are ready to work with us to help our manufacturers make it in America. In fact, polling tells us that the uh, American public overwhelmingly, in the 90 percent category, Republicans and Democrats, conservatives and liberals, believe if America is going to be the kind of country they want it to be for themselves, their families, and their children, it will be in part because we are making things in America, growing things here in America, and selling them here and around the world. Today we are announcing specific bills that will advance those four bills, four goals. <laughs> Let me say, though, that there are 40 pieces of legislation uh, which we have assembled and focused on which we, can, we believe can be part of a Make It in America agenda, many of which are sponsored by every one of the people you see standing on this platform who are committed to making it in America, manufacturing in America, so that every American feels confident that they can make it. The full list of Make It in America bills is available on our website, democraticwhip.gov. It's now my privilege to turn the microphone over to my colleagues to talk about their bills and what they would do to create jobs and help secure our middle class. Uh, first, I want to yield to my friend, uh, one of the senior members of uh, the platform group here uh, from the state of Texas, uh, uh, Eddie Bernice Johnson. Thank you. Congressman Johnson. I'd like to thank Mr. Hoyer for his leadership to revitalize American manufacturing. I strongly believe that if the United States is to remain competitive in a long term, we need to ensure 
that American companies maintain the capacity to manufacture new and innovative products here at home. The key to maintaining this capacity is through strategic investments in advanced manufacturing research, development, and education. H.R. 4 1421, the Advanced and Innovative Manufacturing Act of 2013, or the AIM Act, which I introduced this week, along with many of my Democratic colleagues here today, makes these important investments. The AIM Act brings the public and private sectors together to tackle the research needs of industry. It provides a small and medium-sized manufacturers with innovation vouchers that will allow them to make their companies and products more competitive. And finally, H.R. 1421 ensures that our community colleges are preparing students for the manufacturing jobs of the future. The decline in U.S. manufacturing is a threat to the middle class and middle class jobs and our economy. We need our manufacturing sector to be the most sophisticated in the world using transformative technologies and innovative manufacturing processes. H.R. 1421 and the Make It in America agenda will ensure that U.S. companies have the tools and the workforce they need to meet the challenge ahead. I want to thank you, and <laughs> thanks to Mr. Hoyer. Thank you. Um, now, we have a vote on, so we want to be brief. But I want that Rosa Delora, thank you for being here. And before I recognize the next speaker, I want to go, Dan, I'm going to introduce you so you don't, you're going to be next. Uh, Tony, I want you to start with you, and I want to give the names. Go very quickly, give your name and state, and show the support for Make It in America. Tony Gardner, North California. Rosa Delora, Connecticut. The strongest supporter of Make It in America in the Congress of the United States. Susan Davis, California. Carol Shaneport in New Hampshire. Raul Ruiz, California. John Pierce, Michigan. All right. Hi, Jerry Bouchard from Illinois. Patrick Murphy, Florida. Sean Carney, the first state of Delaware. Jack Spear, California. Sam Gibby, Buffalo, New York. Bob Joe Figures, New Jersey. Brad Schneider, Illinois. Jenny Hap, Washington State. And Tommy Garner, California. Rick Nolan, the Iron Range of Minnesota. <laughs> Tim Ryan, Ohio. Joe Crowley of New York, make it in Queens and the Bronx. <laughs> Excellent. Now, uh, I said we need a plan. You don't win a game unless you have a, uh, a plan, a game plan. 